People who don't like KDE, in what aspects is it too much? This is actually an interesting question and differently from usual, this is from the Linux subreddit, whereas most of the feedback that I see usually is from the KDE subreddit. So I'm wondering if this could be a way to discovering some new opinions that I didn't know about. So let's see what are the most upvoted answers. The first one is KDE is cluttered. There are so many settings everywhere, which to be honest is true. I've talked about this many times at this point. I have to Google it three or four times to find where the things that I would like to change uh, are and keep in mind that I am not a new user. To be honest, I sometimes also get lost into the settings. At this point, I know most of them, but sometimes I just cannot find that option that happens. What we're trying to do is actually do a redesign, maybe not a redesign, but a reorganization of the system settings where most of the settings are. Now we are actually running some usability tests. So we're uh, taking a sample of people who don't use KDE, trying to say we have this, uh, Say we have these uh, categories. If we told you to change these settings, which category would you look for? And uh, in that way we can actually understand whether our organization is good or bad. So there are uh, ongoing improvement and work in that direction and hopefully we'll see that soon. What else? Consistency. Uh, see, every app looks different. We have hamburger menu, normal menu, toolbars. So actually I joined KDE because of consistency and I was like, I am still the goalkeeper of the KDE consistency goal. So my personal goal is to make KDE as consistent, consist, consistent sorry, as possible. And I'm trying my best, but of course it's not that easy. And the hamburger menu was something that I discussed a lot over the years. Uh, it's funny, <laughs> it's not funny. So the decision that was took is to actually keep the hamburger menu and try to port it as many apps as possible. Some apps don't want a hamburger menu and they prefer to keep the menu bar toolbar um, combo. And um, those apps may, may have an optional hamburger menu. The hamburger menu that we have is actually pretty cool because it's a custom component called K hamburger menu very originally and it's very magical because if you add something to the toolbar that is in the menu it will automatically disappear and the opposite and it also displays all of the options that are usually in the menu bar so it's pretty cool actually. So four kickoff menus or three task managers out of the box I think that maybe is a little bit overkill. Uh, kickoff is actually just the default one others have different names like kicker but uh, I guess he meant application uh, launcher which makes sense. Uh, it's slightly overkill sure. Um, four kickoff menus, do we have four? So there is kickoff, there is the application dashboard which is the full screen one there is the menu one and that's it, should be three. It should be three. The only one that would be fine with removing is the menu bar, the menu one, that uh, the one that looks like a menu. I would keep the application dashboard because that's uh, something that's not covered at all by kickoff. So, but I see the point. Three task managers is slightly <laughs> unfair. Uh, uh, it should be two as far as I know. I am surely going to be proved, proven wrong. And those two are actually the same package because Econ's only task manager and the classical task manager is actually the same applet. It's just exposed with two different names depending on what a user wants. So it's more easier, it's easier to switch between them. KD apps, there are great like Dolphin, Ocular, Kate, Gwenview, but there are a lot of other KD apps that are totally unstable. KD has maybe eight to 10 top apps, except this, the quality of the rest is below the bar. I would say slightly more than 10, but I do see the point and that is also something that there is a lot of work in trying to fix. A lot of apps from KD are outdated, except for the like, 10 to 15 top ones 
And uh, now there is Kurigami, and Kurigami is hoping to see, thanks to Kurigami, a new wave of apps. So what's Kurigami, if you don't know? Uh, it is a framework to build QML applications, and it actually makes it much easier to do that. So there are many new apps coming in, like NeoChat and the Telegram client. Those apps that are completely new, being written in Kurigami. There's also like a mail client, uh, but also a file manager. There's a new image viewer called Coco. There's a lot of stuff coming up. Dolphin is slow compared to Nautilus, for example, thumbnail generation. Interesting, I will test that one. KDPIM is totally broken. Yes, that, that's, there's nothing to say about it. Bugs right now is much better, but uh, still bugger than GNOME, which is fair. And to be honest, that's not because of KD Plasma developers being bad, but because of the philosophy behind the two projects being completely different. You have a much, much more probably complex uh, with uh, much more moving parts that is KD GNOME is more minimalistic in his philosophy, two different approaches. And of course, KD, KD's one is going to be more uh, bug, uh, bugger, is going to be bugger. Okay, so this one is another super long comment. Let's start with one. Many KDE programs, especially Plasma, feel like jack of all trades, but a master of none. Interesting one. I, I had never heard of this one. What's the idea? We can debate until the cows come about GNOME strict design policies and simplic simplistic, sometimes to the point of a limitation user interface, blah, blah, blah. KDE Plasma can be configured to look and act like almost anything, it makes available hundreds of different widgets, but it sometimes feels to me like the overall workflow and how these pieces are connected to form a cohesive wall is ignored. Okay, personally, I disagree with this analysis. I think that there is actually a strong interest in making sure that the default workflow works nicely out of the box. The sad part is that, of course, if you start customizing stuff, then making sure that the result is actually cohesive is up to you and not up to the uh, developers. But the default workflow is actually very curated. Choice and flexibility is great, but every option that developers add is a piece of conf configurable state that some someone has to configure, kind of. Like, yes, but it's not really about some piece of con configurable state that somebody has to configure. Rather, it's about the UI being too complex because of having too many options, because most of the option will never, never be configured by anyone. Most of the option won't be touched by anyone by most people. But so the issue isn't that you like open up KD Plasma and have to configure all of the options. It's just that if you have a lot of options, then it's complex to find the one that you're looking for and the UI is going to look more scary. Yeah, you can read here. If you make an application with 10 configurable settings, then just about anybody would be able to configure it in a matter of minutes. If it has 100 settings, then only hardcore users will have the passions to configure it to the test this. No, because it, you don't open up a project and configure everything, like depending on the amount of options it has. You open up a new project and then you configure what you need and how much, uh, how long that task is going to take depends on how much, uh, how easy it is for you to actually find the options you need. And the more options a project has, the longer it takes to actually find what you need. Let's try, last time I've tried KDE Neon, I wanted to globally disable animation and you can do that. There were at least three different switches for disabling animations scattered around. This is not true, I'm sorry, but I'm not gonna let that one slip. None was a global toggle and setting all of them off did not disable all animations. You needed to add a line to some config files, setting the timer for animation to be zero to achieve what I wanted. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, so here I have system settings and it's looking weird because I'm on GNOME. So I'm running KD system settings in GNOME, which is weird, but it works. And I must show you how to disable animations. If you search for animations, you get general behavior. 
and here an emission speed you put it to the minimum and that's it if you want this even easier you go to the home screen and here an emission speed minimum so you just literally have this card to open up system settings never click anywhere except here drag and drop here boom done you click apply which i won't do and that's it if some animation still you still see some animations even though you just uh, drag and dropped animation to zero then please file a bug and it's super easy to fix so there's not like lots of uh, i think what happened is that it got confused with desktop effects and in here we have some like the fit where is it like you, you can choose between feed desktop and slide but this is the only other animation settings system settings there's just one and it's on the home page so no sorry i i don't uh, i don't agree with this one and you do not need to change any config file obviously if somebody some piece of kitty doesn't uh, stop doing animation after we change that settings, just make a bug report. It's super easy to fix it. The only gripe I have with KDE is that mixed DPI scaling is busted. Yes, that's true. And uh, I'm actually super ignorant about this, so I just leave it like totally true. And uh, let's switch to the next one. I can't quite understand this sentiment, uh, which is the most frequent reason I see for disliking KDE software is that the users perceive it as cluttered and overwhelming. Well, I actually agree, man. I mean, it's a bit over overwhelming. Yes, Plasma offers many settings and options, but the default configuration is pretty good. I think that a lot that uh, a lot that we see in this thread is people that haven't used KDE for a couple of years because KDE has improved a lot in the last couple of years and it's still improving. So I think people like before saying that you have to change a lot of settings and it's super overwhelming haven't tried the latest release, but even in latest, it's still a bit clutter. There's still work on going on, obviously. So I see pizza. I'm Italian. Let's read pizza. So imagine to go in a pizzeria. Would you prefer to have two pizzas on the menu or 10? It's more like 10 <laughs> versus 100. I'd rather go with 10 pizza please versus two, but 10 pizza please versus the 100. Hmm, I'd expect a pizzeria to have at least 15 to 20 options. So what very good pizzerias do is that you offer 30 pizzas at least. I don't know, here in Italy it's at least 30 for a serious pizzeria. And then you actually allow the user, which is the client, the pizza guy, the Italian, to customize their pizza by allowing him to change and add ingredients. As an example, my pizza is a marinara. Where did I pronounce it with such an English? A marinara. It's a marinara with added um, onions, olives, and pepperoni. And that's not on any menu, but I just go there and say that. Please, a marinara with this, that, and that. And that works. So if you count all of the options in any pizzeria, you do get at least 100 pizzas. Like if you enter any pizzeria and you start ordering pizzas, you can at least do 100 before you have to repeat yourself. I can guarantee that in Italy. It feels unintuitive and unpolished. Okay. In the GNOME app settings, I can go to the correct place first try. In KDE, I have to troll through several layers of menus first. Again, that's true and we are working on improving that. I constantly, const <laughs> constantly feel lost in a maze of half-baked features, even more so than in Windows, although maybe I just got used to Windows. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, there are some half-baked features. Like I would argue that activities are quite half, which is why there is some sentiment asking to remove activities. I'm also not a fan of the design language. It feels a bit like the design equivalent of programmer art. Icons feel too big, as does the time date. The menu acts in ways that I don't want it to, and I'm overall not impressed with its design language. About this, by the way, um, like the time date being too big was a complaint that I heard a lot. And we actually addressed that a couple of uh, versions ago, like six to 12 year, uh, months ago. 
So uh, as uh, also icons being too big was also addressed by me actually with margin RS in the panel. So as I said before, there has, there has been improvement and uh, I think that maybe some people should try out the new version. There's been a redesign and maybe that will help make these people a bit happier, I hope. <laughs> Although I don't particularly dislike KDE, the top two annoying things about KDE that come to my mind are the settings menu, which in my opinion is terrible. Okay, so we fix system settings and that's it. Like, we, we, we're done. <laughs> what else is this? It's like system settings, system settings, system settings. So easy. Okay, we are working on fixing system settings, so nice. It's cluttered, it's not a good user experience, blah, 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 yes. Now, the other one, sorry, is the way KD handles multiple desktops. Multiple desktops, that is, ah, okay, starting with two desktops and then creating more on demand. There is a script to do that, uh, not a script, um, Kwin extension to do that. So if you like that, you can actually have it. I also don't really like Dolphin's default layout. It's just too much information on a single window. I will talk about Dolphin more. Uh, in detail in the days to come. And then there is David Edmundson, KDE developer. It would be nice if someone responded to OP's actual specific questions. People in this thread are repeating the me too using, using the same value broad strokes with a vague language like the too much that doesn't result in anything actionable. I mean, it's just fix system settings and we're done. After system settings is fixed, KDE is basically perfect. I tried to modify my taskbar clock and ended up deleting the entire bar. I spent 30 minutes trying to find the right sub, sub menu to revert my changes before giving up. How many years haven't you used KDE Plasma in? Like this, no. Okay, so let, let, let's talk about this. I, I totally disagree with this one. So, I tried to modify my taskbar clock and ended up deleting the entire bar. So doing this on accident is so difficult because we've actually hidden the option to delete a panel to make sure that it wasn't accidentally uh, tr um, triggered. And we even made sure that it was always the furthest, farthest option from the panel. So if you go into more options, Remove panel is always as far as the panel as we could put. So this one is quite hard already. But okay, I spent 30 minutes to find the right sub sub menu to revert my changes. Okay, so when you uh, when you remove a panel, immediately you get a notification saying, "Hey, you removed the panel. Do you want to undo that immediately?" But okay, let's say that for whatever reason he didn't get the notification, maybe do not disturb, that could happen. In order to add back the default panel, you literally just do right click, add panel, default. Like, how did you, how did you not see this for 30 minutes? It's literally right click anywhere, anywhere. I mean, you lost everything on your, pan on your desktop, so you only have the desktop. You right click anywhere, add the uh, panel. No, no, no. I uh, totally disagree. I very recently migrated from XFC to Plasma and I don't plan on going back. What you see as an overwhelming degree on, of choice and configurability, I see as opportunities to avoid having to install and manually configure other packages to compensate for things that XFCE does not provide. To avoid writing scripts, etc., etc. Okay, nice. So. We've got at least one happy person about KDE. Love KDE, the application suite is amazing and rolls over GNOME any day. The application suite, yeah, kind of. I think it's slightly better. Now the bad, it is very unstable and glitchy, which is true. If you try to use a dual monitor, yeah, especially the dual monitor, super buggy stuff. I I totally agree. <laughs> this one is nice. Let them be... Ho vo uh, let them be overwhelmed. Not every desktop OS needs to be simplified, toy aping, whatever Mac has last. Oh, I don't really like this take. There's room for power tools of desktops, sure. KD Plasma is full features and they are discoverable because there are signif signifiers, signifiers for them, i.e. clutter. New users won't know how everything works, but they can explore, learn, and change everything to fit their needs. 
Okay, kind of, kind of. I think that was it. Uh, interesting part was this one. Hopefully this was interesting. There's a, I hope you learned something. So I learned that it's all about system setting and some bugs. And uh, I mean, the stability issues, I don't think they're ever going to go away completely, but we can and are surely trying to improve on that. There's lots of talk about how that could be done in particular. And about the system settings, again, there is movement to actually redesign all of the sidebar, the organization and where things are. So hopefully in a couple of years, the situation on that will improve too. And since we did a redesign and now the look is completely different compared to before, hopefully we can be happier and are, well, we can be happier that we are actually improving the product significantly.